This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. This morning, my friend Angelica and I have been playing with her brother convertible machine. It's a KX395, and the reason we wanted to play with it is try out the needle beetle with it. So this is a needle beetle from Chris Crafter, and I've used these before particularly on the LK150. And the really interesting thing about the convertible is it can be standard gauge or it can be bulky gauge. Now, when it's bulky gauge, the Chris Crafter copies an eight stitch pattern over and over across the bed. But when it's standard gauge, it actually will copy a 16 stitch pattern across the bed. Now you can expect to need to practice a little with this. Angelica and I played with it this morning and we had to try yarns and try tensions and here we are with a sample. It's not perfect but it is a 16 stitch pattern with the needle beetle doing most of the counting for us. So to begin my sample I am going to cast on and knit a few rows with the white yarn and I am just going to do a quick cast on. And I'm using a tight tension because this machine does bulky and standard. I'm down on a tension two using some standard gauge 212 yarn. And I just put it on every other needle and I'm putting a close pin on and I'm getting a comb. This is Angelica's comb for this machine. Can you kind of get it centered? It has a little bit of weight. I don't think I'm really going to need to add any weight beyond that. And now I'm bringing out the in-between needles and I want to be on needle 32 on each side. and do about 10 rows before my be beginning of my hand counted stitch. I want to end with carriage on the right. And then I want to start counting and start using the needle beetle. Now let's look at this chart that I created. I didn't have a 16 stitch chart, so Angelica and I made a chart and we changed it a few times and this is what I ended up with. And it's kind of a Christmassy star chart. Looks a little like a poinsettia knitted up. Now it's 16 stitches wide and since we're going to be thinking from right to left, I've numbered it 1 through 16. So these are the needle numbers here. And then these are the row counter numbers here. It takes two rows to make each row. And I guess I should say two passes. You have to knit across with the white and then you have to knit across with the red to make one row, which is logical since this machine won't carry two colors. And it's done by putting the machine in part. This machine goes in part by sliding this central piece over to the part right here. And that means that it slips. When I knit across, it just goes across, it just leaves the yarn in front, and it does nothing with the needles unless the needles are pulled out. So let's look at my chart. First of all, this is to help me keep track of where I am. So I'm going to put my row counter on zero, zero, zero. And now that I'm on zero, 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 I'm going to look at rows one and two. Now I'm going to do something I don't usually do. Usually when I say row one, my row counter says zero and I'm knitting so that it will say row one. But for this, I found it really useful to 
fiddle with the row counter so that it says exactly what I should do next. So I'm going to do that in a minute. I'm going to start differently than I'm going to carry on. I'm going to start by knitting one row from right to left with the white only. So what I need to do is pick out the stitches for the white only. I'll zoom in just a little and I'm hoping you can see enough to follow along. So here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying, okay, I'll put this ruler under the row I'm doing, which is the bottom row. I am working from the bottom up, which is a typical thing in machine knitting. So here I have a mark one and two. My very first job is to get the white stitches in. So I'm going to pull out the needles that are going to carry white yarn. My carriage is threaded with white yarn. So I have two needles here on the right that I'm bringing out to deposition. Now this machine has little marks so you can see where deposition is. And then I skip one because it's going to be a red stitch. And then I pull out one more white one. And then I skip another that's going to be red and I pull out three white ones, these three. Skip another and pull out three more. Skip another, pull out one, pull out one more, and then every time I look at the last needle. Angelica and I marked her needle bed. She actually put numbers for the needle numbers and number 16 is the last one I have to pull. I don't have to pull all the way across. I'll let the needle beetle do that. But what I do have to do is make sure I pull them correctly. So my last needle, number 16, is white. I'm threaded with white and I pulled it out, so that is correct. Then I take my needle beetle and I have the metal tail sticking out toward the right and there's an arrow pointing toward the left. And I always put it down on the right hand side of the knitting and I make sure that it is forward and back the right amount by getting this little lip right here down into that deep groove right behind the out of work needle butts. And then all I have to do is slide it across and it counts all the needles correctly. And there's all the needles counted out correctly for me. So that when I knit across, those needles will carry white yarn. The other needles will just have yarn flowing in front of them, which is what we call a float. So I set my needle beetle aside for the next job. And I go ahead and make sure my end needles are out. I like my end needles out for a really nice edge. And I'm going to knit from right to left with white yarn. This is to get me started. And if you look closely at this, and it's not easy to see, there are floats. There are supposed to be floats. This is a stitch I didn't select, and it has a piece of yarn in front of it. I'm pulling it out and kind of holding up that piece of yarn with my tool so you can see that there are floats. Now I haven't finished this line of the knitting. I need to do the row two, um, and I'm turning my row counter to two. This way, when I look at a two on the row counter, I match it to a two on the chart, and I know what to do. And I'm going to, whenever my carriage is on the left, and my carriage is at the left, I unthread, and I'm going to park my yarn under the end of the machine, because this machine does not have a color changer, and I'm going to thread the red yarn. So I change my color every time the carriage is on the left. You could do this by changing your yarn every time, but that's more work and we don't want to make this more work. We want this to be pretty fun and fairly easy. Now I have to count out my red. Now we're all prone to our own kinds of mistakes. When Angelica was working, 
she would say, oh, I have to use the beetle. She would forget to use the beetle. What I did, I think was worse, I had a tendency to forget what color to pull. See, this is red. I want to pull red. So I want to pull this third needle right here. And then I want to skip one and pull the fifth needle. And skip three and pull this one. And skip three and pull this one. And skip one and pull this one. And then, as always, I see what my last needle is. My last needle, number 16, is supposed to be white. And would you look at that? I made a mistake. So if you make a mistake, you have to go back. So let's do that again. I want to skip two and pull one. Skip one and pull one. Skip three and pull one, because I'm doing the red. Skip three and pull one. Skip one and pull one. And my last needle, which is this needle, is white. And white is how I have it, so I got it this time. And then I just use the needle beetle to copy the stitch pattern on a cross. So I run it across, and it copies the stitch pattern. And I don't bring out my end needles ahead of time. I do them after. This is to give me better looking edges. You can also do isolated patterns, but I wanted to bring them out because usually with a needle beetle you're going to work all the way across. So. I have brought my end needles out and I'm going to knit this first row with the red. Now that the red is in, you can see the floats more easily. See that red float right there? Now a very important tip is that from now on you're going to have two red floats, then two white floats, then two red, because we're changing every other row. So if the phone rings, or someone comes to the door, or the dog is in the room running in circles, whatever distraction you've got, and you come back, you're trying to figure out where you are, you want to make sure that you have two white floats, two red, two white. So over here on the right hand side, I have a couple of things to do. On the right hand side, I never change colors, but I look at my chart and I see that I'm now on row counter number three and here's row counter number three. Looking here, I can see match the three to the three. So pull this little slider up or use a ruler or keep track or cross out whatever you feel like doing, but you want to keep track of what row you're on. So here I am on three and I'm threaded with red. Whatever color I'm threaded with when I'm on the right is the color that I'm going to pick the needles for. So to pick these red needles, I skip one and pick a red, skip two and pick two reds, skip five and pick two reds, one, two, three, four, five, skip um, two and pick one red and skip two and pick one red. My last needle is red. There's red in the carriage and number 16 is pulled out to knit red. Time for the beetle. I use the beetle to copy the pattern all the way across. And then I look at my end needles. I want to pull this end needle out and I knit with the red. Now my row counter says four. Four is this row. I am on the left hand side, so I am going to change colors. I am unthreading the red, picking up the white. You do need to be a little careful because when you have such long loops, from unthreading, you often need to pull the yarn down or hand feed, somehow deal with the fact that your tension is really loose overhead. So now I'm threaded with the white, my row counter says four, my chart the number four, I'm pulling out the needles that go with these white stitches. So my first one's white, pull it, then skip one and pull two, then skip two and pull five. 
then skip two and pull two. Skip two, pull two. One left, it's red, it is not pulled, so this is accurate. I always stop and give it a quick look and make sure I pulled out the right stuff. And then use the beetle to copy the pattern all across. Check the end needles and knit with the white. When the carriage is on the right, I always have to go up on the chart. So I've just gone up one row, and now the numbers on the chart say 5, 6, and the number on the row counter says 5. So that all matches. I'm threaded with white yarn. I'm going to count out white stitches. So on this row of the chart, I skip 1 and do 3 white. Skip 3 red, do 3 white. Skip 3 red, do 3 white. My last needle, I always check my last needle. It's white, there's white in the carriage, and it's pulled out. So that's correct. And now I use the beetle to copy the design across. Check my end needles. I've got one I want to pull and knit my white. Now my chart is on six and I just knitted white. Now if you don't know where you are, look at your yarn. If you're on the left, you always change yarn. Well, if you look closely, the last needle knitted was white. So if I were interrupted, I would know right now I have to change my yarn because I haven't changed it yet. It still has white in there and that's the last one I knitted. So I'm putting the red in. Most definitely time to knit red. And then I have to pick out the red needles. Row six, chart row six, and the end needle is red. Then I skip three and I have three red ones. Then I skip three and have three more red ones. And then the last three are white and the final needle is white. And there's red in the carriage, so the red needles are the ones I pulled and they're the right ones. So copy the pattern across with the handy dandy beetle. Pull out the end needle over there so I get a prettier edge. Miss Picky here and knit my red row. Now, I'm on the right. When I'm on the right, I want to go up a row. Besides, it says row counter seven. So up I go. I just adjusted it early on because I really only knitted six rows, but having it say seven means match, match. It just gives me a little shorthand way of knowing where I am in the pattern. And I need to hand count a red row because I'm threaded with red yarn. So my first needle's white, but my next three are red. One, two, three. A white needle and then three red. A white needle and three red. A white needle and three red. My last needle on the left is red and I did select it. And using the beetle to copy the pattern across the entire needle bed. I'm only using part of the needle bed, but it'll go the whole way if you want to. And so, time to knit this red yarn. My carriage is on the left. When my carriage is on the left, I always swap the yarn. So out comes the red, in goes the white, and the white is a little loose, so I'm adjusting tension by fiddling with the upper tension unit. Or you could hand feed, whatever you prefer. My carriage um, is on the left. I changed my yarn. My row counter says eight. My chart says seven and eight, so that's good. I'm threaded with white. I need to pull white needles. So my first needle gets pulled. It's a white needle. Skip three and pull one. Skip three and pull one. 
skip three and pull one. The last three are red and they're not pulled and they match up and everything looks correct. Copy the pattern with the beetle. Pull out the end needle if it's not out. I look at both ends, but this one was already out. And then I knit this white row. I'm on the right. When I'm on the right, I move the chart up a row. And I'm trying to get it right where I want it. My row number here is 9. My row number here is 9. I'm threaded with white. That means count the white. You don't always count the same color from a certain side because you do two rows of each color except for the setup row of white. So here I am on the right and I'm counting the white because white's what's in the carriage. That's which one to count out, to pull. So here I have two stitches white, three stitches that I skip, and then one stitch of white two stitches I skip and one stitch of white, two stitches I skip and one stitch of white, and then I have three reds and my final stitch is white, and the white stitch I pulled matches up to my mark on 16. So that's accurate. Now counting out 16 is more work and a little more painstaking than counting out 8. But look at the power of this. This is a totally non-patterning portable plastic machine. And here I am doing a fancy fair isle on it. I am actually pretty excited about that. So I've copied my pattern. Both of my end needles are out, so no worries. I can knit my row. Now my carriage is on the left and I change color. Adjust my tension and look at my row counter. 10. Row number on the chart. 10. Super duper. So I have two white, but I'm threaded with red, so I want to pick out the red. Three red, skip one. Two red, skip one. Two red, skip one. Three red. And the last stitch will be a white stitch, and that matches. So I've been accurate, and use the needle beetle to copy the pattern on across, pull the end needles because they weren't selected, and I'm going to knit with red from left to right. And now my carriage is on the right and I'm on row 11. And as I mentioned earlier, when we're on the right, we move up the ruler. So here I am, row 11, and I am knitting red. So I want to count out my red. So skip three white ones and get three red ones. Then skip a white one and get a red one. Skip a white one and get a red one. Skip a white one and get three more red ones. I should end up with two white ones that I don't pull, and that last needle that I don't pull should be number 16. So that's accurate, and I copy the pattern. Deal with my end needles and knit the red row. And now I'm on the left, and whenever I'm on the left, I swap the yarn. So I'm taking the red out, I'm putting the white in, I'm adjusting the tension, and I look at my row counter, it says 12. And I look at my chart, I'm on 12. And since I have white in the carriage, I am going to count out and pull the white needles. So starting on the right here, I have three white needles, so I pull them. I skip three red ones, but I pull one white one here, pull a white one here, pull a white one here, skip three red ones, and pull two white ones. My last white one should be right here on needle 16, and it is, so I can copy the pattern. 
with the beetle, check the end needles, and knit the row. Carriage is on the right. Row counter says 13. This needs moved up. Now it said 13 here and 13 here, so that matches. White yarn is in the feeder. I need to count out the white. So starting on this end, skip that first needle, but put three white ones out. Then skip three and put three white ones out. Then skip three and put three white ones out. The final three white needles, the last of them, one, I've got to check this, white, three, 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 three. Perfect. The last one is on number 16. That's where I mess up if I'm not counting carefully. So you just need, you know, a little bit of a quiet time. And to get in a routine, a little practice, and pretty soon you've got kind of a routine going. So now I'm knitting this row, and that puts the white in on this row. My carriage is on the left, and I change yarn. Now, I know I've repeated this a number of times, but I'm just going to go up to the center of the pattern and finish the pattern off camera and then show you the actual pattern. Now I'm threaded with the red. Row counter says 14. Chart says 14. So I want to pull the red needles. So this needle here is going to carry red yarn and skip three and get three needles to have red yarn. Skip three and get three. Those are going to be red. Skip three, and the last of those three is on my final needle, number 16. So I'm threaded with red. I'm going to use the beetle and copy the pattern. Deal with my end needle that didn't come out on the left. You can't do the end needles first, because if you do them with the beetle, it'll always pick out that end needle, and you'll be out of pattern in the middle. So you do it after you've patterned. And then knit across with my red. And now I'm on the right-hand side, and this says 15. And here I need to move up and get to 15. So now I'm on 15. And I've got red yarn, so I need to count the red stitches. The red stitches on this end are the second and the fourth. And then I skip four and get one. And then I skip four and get one. And skip one and get one. That last needle should be red. It should be pulled, and it should be number 16, and it is. So. I should mention that it occurred to me, if you're making a small piece, you could put your right hand needle on zero and you could use the numbers on the needle strip to, instead of having to mark um, all these markings. And initially, Angelique and I were trying this out and we put needle numbers right on the bed and we said, okay, I'm gonna pull number two and number four. But we realized that for both of us, and the way we think it was easier to go one back, one out, one back, one out, four back, one out. It was That was easier for us. So there are different ways you could do this. Get your own routine. But it is a pretty wonderful gadget, and I love this machine. Only trouble is my girlfriend, Angelica, loves it too. I have to get my own, folks. Okay, so I'm threaded with red, and I'm going to go ahead and knit this row. Now I am on row 16, and my carriage is on the left. And when my carriage is on the left, I swap colors. So I'm changing colors. And I'm putting the white in the carriage. And then adjusting the tension. I'm checking my number against my chart. And I'm going to count out and put in the white stitches. This will be the last row to get to halfway up the pattern. I'll do the second half of the pattern myself because I don't want the video to take forever and ever. So here we go. I'm doing the white, threaded with white. So pulling the white stitches 
pull this one, skip one and pull this one, skip one and pull four, skip one and pull four, skip one and pull one. The last stitch should be a red stitch. That all matches. And over I go. To copy my pattern, check my end needles and knit that white row. So I'm going to keep working and then I'll be back to show you how this turned out. Now I have gotten to the last line on the chart and it says 32 on my row counter. 32 is my last procedure and I'm threaded with white and since I'm threaded with white I'm going to count the white stitches over here. So I have three whites and then I have one red and three whites, one red and one white, one red and three whites, one red and two whites. My last needle is a white on number 16. They're all evened up. Now I'm copying the pattern on across with the beetle. And I'm going to go ahead and knit this row of white. Now what I'm going to do is show you the back. You can almost see the design in the floats. So what I think would be good is to take it off of slip. I've just pulled this little bow tie thing from the part over to the plane and I'm going to knit, I don't know, 10 rows, bind off and I'll show you the fabric. So here's my little sample of a 16 stitch star made using the needle beetle and it was really great to have a little help with the counting. Now I have really enjoyed these needle beetles for different machines and a lot of stitches that you can do, for instance a tuck stitch, are very easily done with the needle beetle. Now I've found that it counts flawlessly. I'll tell you who doesn't count flawlessly is me. So whenever I have trouble with it, it's usually because I didn't double check my counting each row. So I do want to warn you about that. And of course I want to mention there's a reason why we all love our patterning machines. The 24 stitch punch cards make a significantly bigger pattern than this and the electronic machines will make an enormous pattern even the width of the needle bed depending on the model. So you have a lot of options with the new patterning machines. But for these portable plastic machines Chris has got needle beetles for a number of models. She has one for the 350, she has this one for the convertible, and she's got one for the LK150. So they do work beautifully and it does a whole lot of the counting for you and you don't have to do it. What you have to do is count the first 16 accurately. Now I have found on the bulky machines, or even if I change the striker combs on this and make it into a bulky machine, and I'm only counting eight, I make less mistakes. Counting 16, I tend to make a few more mistakes. But this piece turned out great because I had a routine and I had practiced with it. So I hope that you got a kick out of this demonstration and if you are a plastic bed machine lover, you might want a needle beetle too. They're available at chriscrafter.com, K-R-A-S-K-R-A-F-T-E-R.com. Now I also want to mention that I have a Facebook group now that you can join that's free, that will have more and more content on it, and lots of other knitters. And I have a website with my books and videos, and I'll have a number of interesting links down in the description. So I hope you give it a look and give me a visit. And if you enjoy videos like this, I hope you'll subscribe so that we get more people to see 
machine knitting in action. Thanks everybody and see you next time.